Poe, remember in game two, had that 21-point performance. Just a few minutes ago, I asked Poe how his nerves were. He said he wasn't nervous in the least. And should this go beyond tonight, Mike, Poe would play again or someone would start in Perkins' place because Rivers believes he is doubtful for a game six as well. Well, Michelle, Poe did start five games during the regular season. <laughs> a little different pressure and a little different scenario, but he has played very well. An excellent role player coming off the bench. Now gets a chance to start. Rondo again being guarded by Kobe Bryant. Our Spanish language version of tonight's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAP button on your TV. And a travel call on Paul Pierce. The officiating crew for tonight's game five and have all worked a game already in the series. Dick Pavetta. That's Kenny Maurer who worked game two. Scott Foster and Bevetto each worked game one of the series. Lamar Odom got off to such a great start in game four, but then like the rest of his teammates, very quiet in the second half. But Saul gets the first points of the game. And with Perkins being out, it changes the Celtics matchup. Garnett, who's been playing Odom, is now playing Gasol. Poe's guarding Odom. And I really believe they're going to miss Kendrick Perkins. Perkins is an outstanding individual defender. Here, Garnett allows him to go to the middle. Good aggressive move by Gasol. Very good right-handed jump hook. I like the idea. It doesn't matter whether it's Perkins or Garnett. Bill Jackson's idea was to get the ball to Gasol early. He made a big-time move. That's how you get him going. Gasol has been taking some heat. They know they need him to play better. He's not played up the par in the finals. Garnett lost it. Bryant comes away. Kobe Bryant for three. That's good. And I think that's the right mentality. If you're Kobe Bryant, when you have the ball, look to be aggressive. When other guys have the basketball, they can be aggressive then. But you have to be the guy that has your foot on the pedal all night long. Brad Monovich knocks down Pierce. Bryant was telling us yesterday that a key for him was right after the collapse, he had to stay up because all the young players are watching how he handled it and tried to stay positive. He's positive, but he had to lead the example. And Phil Jackson doing the same thing. Seeming like he's not that concerned, knows it's a tough situation, but they tried to stay positive for the younger guys. Well, pretty much just like in life. People are always watching. So if you're Phil Jackson and Cole Bryant, the guys are looking to see how they should respond. Shot clock down to six. Rondo gets a good look for Pierce, gets rid of Odom. That's the pass it up. Todd wanted to travel, puts it up. Shot won't go. Odom had it, lost it. And Rondo trying to come up with it. Ball knocked loose out of bounds, and the Celtics will get a new 24. And you see again, early in the game, Kobe Bryant disrupting the Celtics' flow offensively by roaming and wandering. And I like what Rondo did. Even though he missed the little runner, he was aggressive taking it to the basket. Rondo with that left ankle sprain, only played 17 minutes in game four. Throws it behind Poe. And already three turnovers in about 90 seconds for the Celtics. And any concern with a team that's fighting a situation where if they win, they have to travel for another game. Uh, uh, veteran teams, some say, hey, I, I don't want to do that. This Laker team has come out ready and looking forward to going back to ball. The draw inside, tipped out of bounds, still Laker ball. Of course, they came out ready in game four. It was unbelievable to watch how they were up by 24. Even the Celtics couldn't believe how badly they were being outplayed. And then that great turnaround, which in Boston is Kobe Bryant. This is that one. They were saying in Boston it was one of the great comebacks in Boston's, Boston sports history. I'm a Yankee fan. I got a tough time believing that. Even though it was a great comeback, I got a tough time believing. Here's lots of contact as the block. Here's Fisher. Fisher to the basket. He got bumped. And Kevin Garnett will be called for his first foul. And Fisher shaking up. Walking into the cameraman along the baseline. Our man Steve Angel taking a charge. The Fisher's up. As is Steve. Ooh. Wow. Hey, Mike, you don't have to dodge. He's not coming at you. <laughs> that was a replay. I felt You've been pain. in TV a lot, a long time. Are you kidding me, Mike? You're better than that. I'm feeling for Steve. My boy, Steve. Bryant. Fires away. That 
won't go. The odd thing about the great start for the Lakers is they had the 18-point lead at halftime. Kobe Bryant didn't have a field goal and only three points all at the line. Allen to Garnett. And Garnett gets it to go. His outside shot has not been dropping in the finals. But he gets the first two points for Boston. Fisher lining up. Darren Fisher from three-point land. See, and I like that play by Bryant a lot more than the jab step jumper he took on the possession before. He drove it and eventually created penetration that led to the wide open shot by Fisher. Here's Bryant. Allen guarded him in the first half in game four, then Pierce in the second. Nice move. And just like that, the Lakers up by eight. Real similar to the start in game four. The trick is doing it for 48 minutes. Understand the Celtics are going to fight back. And Garnett comes right back with another outside shot. That's poor defense by Gasol. Bryant has cushioned Rondo. What is he coming in to help? Bryant needs no help on Rondo. Ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Allen. Gasol at times has struggled. In fact, their interior defense has been a problem. As Perkins only gets to watch tonight. Meanwhile, the Lakers, of course, with their big man who's been out since January, Andrew Bynum, would make a difference. Ball knocked loose. I think Rondo got a piece of it. Rondo to the basket, passes up a layup, out to Pierce for three. Rondo trying to save it and gets it to Cole. Ray Allen for three. Rondo another rebound and foul by Odom. And then Odom throws a little elbow at Rondo. Tell you what, if you're Rondo, that's a shot that you have to take. This is bad defense by Rodmanovich, allowing him to get all the way to the cup. That's a wide open layup. Good pass out the open Paul Pierce, but I'll take the easy dues as opposed to a three point. But what Rondo does best is what we just saw. He chased down loose balls. He's a very good rebounder. A foul. And free throws coming up. And Rondo played by the ankle, although the reason he didn't play as much for is because Eddie House played so well off the bench in game four. He'll go to the line. The foul is on Bryant, his first. I like the idea of putting the ball on the floor and, and keeping Kobe Bryant honest defensively. He just can't be a Roma. you got to force the issue at times. That loss the other day was the first home loss of the entire postseason for the Lakers. They had won nine straight in the playoffs, 15 overall in a row. In and out. Garnett aggressive on his defense. He's already got a foul. Gasol goes right out of pass inside. Pretty play from Gasol. Really shows you the advantage of having a guy like Gasol that can put the ball on the floor, can knock down the jump shot, can hold. He has to be aggressive and force Kevin Garnett to play deep. The lead is seven. Garnett's jumper won't go. Alley-oop to Gasol, pull on him. Now Gasol takes his time, left-handed, way off. Ball tip, gets it again, and the foul. Now Gasol showing some aggressiveness, and that's what the crowd wants to see. Well, has a lot of body to start this ball game. This is a weak first move. you got to be stronger, but fortunately, Lamar Odom keeping the ball alive, and then Gasol with the good hands, the catch, takes the contact and the finish. When he was acquired from Memphis in that trade in February, the team just took off. They played so well with him. Odom flourished with him. Started off his first playoff game at 36 points in game one against Denver. He played solidly the first couple of rounds, but he has been up and down in the last couple of rounds, especially here in the finals. But him coming to the Lakers almost minimized Bynum's injury. Now people don't even talk about that anymore, and it's a huge factor going forward for the Lakers. They're going to have the most talented front line in the NBA for years to come. Gasol gets that rebound. Gasol, only 7, 27 years old. Kobe Bryant for three. 
18-5, reminiscent of the other night where the Lakers jumped out to the huge lead. Eight straight points, timeout Boston. We've been here before. There have been many memorable games in the Celtics' storied history. Well, at game four to the list. After being up by 24, about midway through the second, a complete turnaround. Actually, it was a 20-point lead midway through the third. And the Celtics kept fighting as Eddie House has come out for the first time tonight. E.J. Brown as well. Pierce the jumper. Puts it in. And Pierce also said about that if he could draw up the way a team could win, he loved the way they won the game because guys like Posey and House added to it. It was one of those total team efforts. Oh, it's big time defensively. And then guys that were called upon from the bench were ready and made play. A travel on Lamar Odom. First turnover for the Lakers. With Perkins out, to me, this is their best lineup, offensively and defensively. How's to spread the floor? P.J. Brown's link against Gasol and Odom. Radmanovic tips it. Shot locked down to nine. Garnett, pass deflected by Odom, gets to P.J. Brown, leans inside, and misses his Gasol the rebound. The reason why I would disagree with this is their best lineup because we witnessed what James Posey did the other night. His impact stretching the floor and then defense. Bryant hits a three again. 21-7. It was 20-6 to start game four. to House. Eddie House fires away and nails the three-pointer. That's why, if, if, if that's Rondo, that's good defense by Derek Fisher. But that's Eddie House. You can't afford to leave his body that far away, allowing him to step into a shot. He's a knockdown shooter. 11 big points off the bench in game four. This is his first foul here. House has bounced around the NBA eight teams in his last five years as we send it over to Michelle. Well, guys, uh, Doc Rivers during the last time out said, hey, composure offensively. The ball is not moving. Everyone's trying to make their own moves instead of trusting the offense. You've got to trust the offense, get back to attacking, keep moving the ball, and trust him. Well, they need to get behind Vic again <laughs> to start trusting. Very similar to the other night. Kobe Bryant, another three-pointer. 24 to 10. Bryant with 14 points on five of eight from the field. You know, and Kurt Schilling questioned the leadership ability of Kobe Bryant. Leadership is not just talking about it as P.J. Brown knocked down the Leadership is going out and setting an example. And Kobe Bryant is doing that to stop his ball. Four and a half left here in the first. Again, the initial onslaught from the Lakers. No, but this is a different onslaught because it's a Kobe Bryant-driven onslaught. Where in the first game, or in the previous game, it was everybody being involved. Here, Bryant is making sure his teammate is riding the wave. Here is fourth three-point shot in the opening quarter. And you remember when he came in, and this is what I love about the guy. He wasn't a great shooter. He's worked extremely hard to make himself a great range shooter. And as we said in game four, as you point out, Jeff, he didn't have a field goal in the first half. He's got four threes already. And people try to expect him to be able to pass early and then be always in rhythm late. It doesn't work that way. It's much more difficult. Ray Allen, a good look. He nails a three. And you see the difference inside, out, inside outside attack. Now you're throwing the ball out to three knockdown shooters in House, in Allen, and in Pierce. Sixty percent shooting for the Lakers. The hot start. Once again, Radmanovic takes a look. Rebound, Bryant back up and draws the foul. He wanted a goaltend on him. Not going to get it, but he will get two free throws. Well, you're defending these three guys. It can't be lack, lackadaisical getting back to the man. You see Eddie House just knocked down a shot, turns it down, gets rid of the basketball, the touch pass to Allen in rip. That was poor coordination between Bryant and Rodmanovich. Two guys going to one, leaving Ray Allen wide open. You see that 17 points. He's almost there already here in the first quarter. That was the lowest point total he's had in the playoffs with the poor shooting as well. Do you need to chant MVP after guys already won it? 
<laughs> it's affirmation. It's appreciation. One of two from the line. Ray Allen the rebound. Three and a half remaining in the first. Lakers already with 25 points. Five of seven from three-point range. Here's to P.J. Brown. Brown gets inside. Too hard. Here's trying to battle. And Rodmanovic, everybody battling for the Lakers early. Fisher to the basket. Banks it in. The ball calling house. Eddie House again. Three pointer in and out. And Odom the rebound. Bryant steps up. Nice pass, Radmanovic. Lakers dominating again here in the first quarter. Sharing the basketball. The ball Odom gets the rebound. His ability to put the ball on the floor and lead the break. Ray Allen on the drive. Reverse layup. Can't get it to fall. P.J. Brown. Finding blocked by Gasol. Odom to the basket. Lays it in. 31-15. Doc Rivers going to use another timeout. Celtics have them right where they want them. <laughs> But Kobe Bryant off to a tremendous start. Uh, the Lakers so sharp early. You talk about his play, his ability to read situations, comes out, gets guys involved, looking to make plays, runs in transition. They set up, looking for the jump shot, unselfish play, and then we know what he can do offensively. In rhythm, stepping in the jump shots, and then slice pass from Powell Gasol, corner jump shot. Gotcha. Lakers rolling early. Nice view of Disneyland. Meanwhile, at the Staples Center, Lakers lead at 31-15. Kobe Bryant has come out with a force, and he sees this challenge as something he looks forward to. I didn't go to college, so this is kind of like my March Madness. This is the Elite Eight. So, you know, you win three, you win the whole thing. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are really, you know, uh, saying the series is over because we're down 3-1 and all sort of stuff, and I don't believe that for one second. You know, if you, if you would have put me in a room and started training camp and said, we'll give you three opportunities, you got three shots to win the whole thing, three games. I'd take that in a second. So, you know, this is, this is exciting. You know, we got one game to handle our business, which is Sunday, and then we'll go from there. But you better believe we're going to be ready. Just get it back to Boston. That's what Phil Jackson keeps saying over and over again, which would be the site for game six and seven. Walton, three-pointer won't go. Pierce the rebound. I would like to see Radmanovich get some time at the four spot to spread the floor and get the shots that Walton is getting right now as Garnett goes to the basket because I think that's been the hardest lineup for Boston to defend is when you can't help off that four spot. Garnett eight points and that might be his second foul. Yes, it is. So he's off to a good start. But he might have to come out of the game. But remember, Doc Rivers already without Kendrick Perkins. Yet P.J. Brown gets off the bench. He's trying to signal Rivers, I'm okay, I'm okay. But the coach does not want to take a chance. And again, Jeff, you always say certain players, you can leave in if they have foul trouble. But Garnett plays so hard all the time. He's a guy that can easily pick up another quick one. Right, and, and when you make plays like that, whether you get that deflection cleanly or not, those have a chance to be called much more often. And sometimes you can't tone down your aggression and still be a really good player. Garnett's passion is why he is so good. Gasol, meanwhile, off to a good start. Seven points, five boards, a couple of assists as a block shot. And the Lakers lead by 14. A minute remaining. We're in another strong opening first quarter for L.A. Stolen by Vujicic on the double team. And we'll give Vujicic 
Vujicic credit for that steal, but that play was set up by the pressure of Jordan Farmer in the backcourt against Eddie Howe. Celtics didn't get into their set until 13 seconds left to go on the shot clock. The Lakers defense was tremendous early in game four as Pierce gets fouled and he'll go to the line. They're talking about Jordan Farmer. Eddie House is not a true point guard, so you have to force the issue. Force him to pick up the basketball, and then the skip pass. Excellent defense by Vujicic. Does a great job coming up with the steal and the easy fast break lead. Now Vujicic, who is just one of nine in game four, makes his first basket off that steal. And Pierce knocks down the first. Well, of course, U.S. Open golf, there'll be an 18-hole playoff. No sudden death in the U.S. Open championships in the first nine holes on ESPN tomorrow, starting at noon Eastern. Tiger Woods birdieing that 18th hole to face, force that playoff. Uh, Rocco Mediate. Another unbelievable weekend of Torrey Pines. And another day of golf down outside San Diego tomorrow. Incredible watching. Outstanding. Watching the best in the world. Get it done. Everybody watch. Farmar! 37 points for the Lakers here in the first quarter. They had 35 in the opening period of game four. Gasol trying to help. And a foul. Mark Rivers was calling for it. They're in the penalty. So more free throws for Paul Pierce. And a bad foul. If you're, Pal, if you're Pal Gasol and Luke Walton defending a pick and roll with Paul Pierce and P.J. Brown, your responsibility is to trap Paul Pierce. You can't foul him. That's two on one. You got to do it without foul. And Pierce back to the line. Halftime of game four, Pierce went to Doc Rivers. He didn't have any fouls, and he said to Doc Rivers, I want to guard Kobe Bryant. He did a tremendous job. Although Ray Allen and the rest of the team did a pretty good job in the first half, but he didn't have a field goal. But it's still always about team defense with Boston. At the end of the day, you have to be able to defend. I remember in 2000 playing against the Lakers. It was overtime. Kobe Bryant was putting on a show. I walked over to Reggie Miller and the coaching staff and said, let me get him for one possession. Let me shut him down. He scored, and that was it. Reggie switched back. <laughs> no, but I, I do think the one benefit of Pierce on Bryant is they didn't have to double team him in the low post. Final seconds of the first quarter. Gasol adjusts nicely, and a goal 10. Tenths of a second remaining. Lakers 65% shooting from the field. They throw up 39 points on the board. Kobe Bryant, who had 17 points in the entire game, four red hot, hitting four three pointers. But here at the Staples Center, Laker fans probably saying, well, we saw this last time, and they hold the lead. Great start, however, for Los Angeles. He watched his team fall behind big in game four, shooting 65%, much like the other night. A few more points. But the difference is Lamar Odom had the big first quarter scoring in game four. It's Kobe Bryant here in game five, Jeff. And you were saying during the timeout, you like this one better. Well, I do, because to me, again, you're playing Russian roulette a little bit when a guy who's a primary scorer is just being a facilitator for an entire half. To always expect him to get going is very difficult. Nice move inside. Meanwhile, Chris Mim yeah. has made an appearance for the I Lakers. lost my train of thought when I saw <laughs> Mim coming over to set the screen on the ball instead of Turia. He has not played a second in the postseason. He's been injured all year. Only played 23 games in the regular season. Pierce to the basket and gets it to go. And it's now 41-24. There's Mim. Vujicic. And fouled on the pass off. Pre-injury, I thought Mim was a very good starting center in this league not a top level guy but a guy who could score he could shoot he's bigger than you think he can rebound in traffic his ankle injury really set him back and he's never gotten back into the rotation uh, the surgery back in december 
And he's been injured the last couple of years. Got some skills for a big man as Vujicic. That's a two-pointer. 19-point lead. Now Mark is a player. Are there any Lakers saying, okay, we just need to, we need to keep going here? Is this thought of what happened in game four on their minds at all? As Pierce draws the foul. Well, it has to be. You realize that you gave a game away. Give the Celtics credit. They took it. But you cooperated on both ends of the floor. So if you're the Lakers, you have to make sure that you continue to finish this up so you give yourself a chance in Boston. And I think with this lineup on the floor, Lamar Odom should go guard Paul Pierce instead of Luke Walton. I put Luke Walton on Posey because Luke Walton's got great basketball IQ, but he doesn't have great lateral quickness. And with this lineup, Pierce is on the attack every possession. And Pierce, the last eight Celtic points. He's got 10 for the game. Just over a minute gone by here in the second. Lakers by 16. Tony Allen also getting some time. He's only played two minutes in the finals. That was in game four. Vujicic misses. Pierce picked up on the switch. Good hard drive and Min with the foul. So Pierce will go to the line. As much as the Celtics think clinching a championship on the home floor would be great, they'd much rather do it tonight. However, if the Lakers win, Game six will be Tuesday, back at the New Garden. Our coverage kicks off 8.30 Eastern time, tip off shortly after 9. The game six and seven, back in Boston. In the 2-3-2 format, and in the history, the 23-year history of that format, no road team has ever won game six and seven. Lakers, even if they win today, still have the odds against them. As Trevor Ariza checks in for Walton. If you look at the respect that Doc Rivers and the Celtics have for the Lakers and Kobe Bryant, you understand, you're talking about facing the best player in the world. You want to end it when you have an opportunity. The Lakers are still dangerous. Bryant getting his rest. It's Hujicic, Farmar, Odom, Ariza, and again, surprisingly, Chris Mim. See right away the adjustments made to put in a better defender in Trevor Ariza so that he can guard Paul Pierce. Farmer, that one was halfway down. Ball knocked out of bounds, and the Lakers will get a new 24. Think about the people on the floor right now in the five. Ariza not in the rotation. Tony Allen not in the rotation. Mim not in the rotation. P.J. Brown had retired and came back. Cassell in and out of the rotation. There are so many guys out there for both teams that really never played a significant role in the regular season in the playoffs. And now, coaches are expecting them to play well here in the finals. And what it tells you is two outstanding coaches believe in the guys because they've gotten it done all year long in practice and working out prior to them. A reason to men. Or there's an alternative theory. They're desperate. Chris Mim, air ball. On his first shot in weeks. And Pierce is bumped by Mim. Again, Mim, he returned very late in the season, played sparingly last couple of games, but not a second in the playoffs. I wonder if he was surprised when Phil Jackson <laughs> said, Mim, he's probably down there like, who? <laughs> Sam Cassell getting his first minutes. Again, if you're just tuning in, Celtics without Kendrick Perkins, there's a reason's call for a foul. That's going to be the 14 foul. Perkins out with a shoulder injury. The physical play by Ariza looking to overplay. He doesn't have to work that hard. Le Lamar Odom is in your lap. He is in help position. So if you're Ariza, no reason to commit that type of foul. And those fouls are critical because right now, Boston's in the penalty the rest of the quarter. The sell to Pierce. Ariza is a good defender, but Pierce, such a strength advantage, drives and gets it to go. But I don't like how he or Walton or Vujicic, for that matter, was playing him. Crowding him like that. Make him make a jump shot. Tony Allen's pass deflected out. Still Celtic ball. So in such an important game, guys like Tony Allen, who's played so sparingly in the playoffs, and Mim with his first appearance, getting some important minutes. I'll tell you what, if I'm Phil Jackson, I'm looking to get substitutions in. You're talking about fighting for your lives. 
You've already proven that you can't be trusted with a lead. I'm going with my guy. Poor defense off the inbounds. Farmar and Vujicic have some words after it. And a 19-point lead has been cut to 11. And Phil Jackson has to call timeout. Farmar and Vujicic, somebody was in the wrong spot. Well, whether they were supposed to switch this screen or not, something's got to happen. Arisa's has also got to protect the basket. That's a total team breakdown. Boston on an 8-0 run. And Paul Pierce is rolling 11 of the last Celtics, 13 points, and he's already gotten to the free throw line seven times. He is absolutely just blowing by the Laker defenders, and I really don't like how they're guarding him. They're crowding him, which is leading him into penetration opportunities. Make him shoot the pull-up jump shot off the dribble. He's proven he can make it from three, and he's proven he can finish with strength around the basket, and he is going by every single Laker right now. It's just not good enough if you're the Lakers. Mark Paul Pierce, a six-time All-Star, but during these playoffs, has he elevated himself to being one of the premier guards in the league now? Well, I thought he was all, always there, to be, to be fair to Paul Pierce, because offensively, he's as good as it gets. Can, can score in bunches, you can put him in situations with ISO, you can put him on the block, and can knock down the long ball. I think he stepped it up defensively, although he said top 10. He has taken it to a brand new level in this playoff round. You talk about defending Joe Johnson, LeBron James, and then Kobe Bryant. He has been stellar. He has said that he feels he's a top 10 defender his whole career, but said when you play on losing teams, people don't think of you as a good defensive team. In six of his first nine years, the Celtics were a losing team. Odom holds the pivot foot, then throws it away. Ball knocked out of bounds. Let's send it over to Michelle. Well, during the last time out, you guys, Phil Jackson told his team he thought they were overplaying Paul Pierce. And he said, here we are. They are five for five this quarter. You have got to shut the fire down. Mike. And they're making part of this comeback with Kevin Garnett on the bench. Garnett with a two-quick foul. Sam Cassell slowly gets to the basket, takes it out to Allen. Allen, a little push shot. And Tony Allen, a nice spark off the bench. Allen was a guard that Doc Rivers thought he was going to use more in these finals to help guard Kobe Bryant. He's a tough, hard-nosed defender. But in the conference finals, hurt his Achilles. Some thought he might not play in the playoffs. Turiath, offensive foul. Good defense once again by the Celtics. This is what the Celtics are all about. Help defense, rotating to the spot. Outstanding job by Posey, still moving. I question the offensive foul call, but good job of rotating and helping the help. He has to be there as Turias starting up in the shooting motion. Definitely was not there in time. That was a block. Pierce, tough four away shot, short, out of the rebound. And about Phil Jackson, I'm going back to Derek Fisher right now. I thought he was off to an outstanding start. I'd also get Gasol back in there and try to regain the rhythm that they had to start the game. And a foul down low. Fisher sat a good part of the collapse that happened. And Phil Jackson actually took some heat in the local L.A. media about some of his moves and questioning. And there's been talk here in L.A. that Doc Rivers is having a great series. Jackson is not. When you're down 3-1, obviously the other coach is doing a lot of good things. Phil Jackson should have taken some heat. His team is down 3-1. There's moves that he's made in the past that have worked out and looked brilliant. Leaving Derek Fisher and, 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 and some of the moves he's made has not worked out, and that's why they're down 3-1. But Phil Jackson is arguably the best coach this league has ever seen. Well, Fisher does check back in with Gasol. Garnett has returned for Boston. Four on the shot clock. Gasol, good defense from Garnett, and he picks up his third foul. I said good defense. I thought he had a clean. Well, he's going to have to sit down again. So P.J. Brown quickly bounces back up. That wasn't a foul, he says. Let's take a look. That's well, tough to tell on that. Oh, Garnett. 
gets serenaded by the Lakers crowd as a word for Kenny Maurer as he walks to the bench he's done for the first half. Yeah, but Coach and I agree with this. I mean, that's three fouls for Kevin Garnett. That's no reason, in my opinion, for him to be done this entire half. I would still play him and trust that, that, that he has to make the right moves, not picking up another foul. And, and I don't think it's a foul, but I also question Garnett's judgment right there. That's a play you make with one foul or no foul, not with two fouls where a referee could easily distinguish that that was a foul. So... Even though it was a missed call, it was also a bad play by Kevin Garnett. Right, he, he got the ball, and if he got part of the hand, the ball was there. It shouldn't have been a foul. And with two seconds left on the shot clock, so definitely a bad play. Pierce, P.J. Brown just cleared space down there, and Pierce able to get to the basket. 15 for Pierce. But on that pick and roll, Fisher has to show. He has to give Bryant some support on that pick and roll. Kobe Bryant. And Posey the rebound. Lakers have some stretches where they look so good defensively and some stretches where they're awful defensively. Tony Allen. Inside. Misses. Knocked out of bounds. Celtic ball. Kobe Bryant trying to argue with Scott Foster. He looks at Dick Bavetta. Bavetta says, no, you got it right. Well, he's actually right. P.J. Brown is the guy that hit the ball out of bounds, so it should be Lakers basketball. 12 straight points by the Celtics. They've started their comeback a little earlier than they did in game four. Down by 19. Right now, seven-point game. Pierce puts a three in, and it's a four-point game. Celtics doing it again. How good has Paul Pierce been in these finals? On both ends of the floor, he has put this team on his back. Vujicic off the mark. Odom had it, lost it. Fisher right there to pick it up. And they've got to post Odom some against James Posey. Posey bodying up. Fisher looking for an opening. Has to force up a contested shot. He wanted to draw a foul. Excellent defense by Pierce. The Lakers haven't scored in five minutes on this 15-0 run. Pierce for three. And Gasol the rebound. I think if you're Kobe Bryant, you have to find a way to get into the seams of this Celtic defense. You can't just settle on being a three-point shooter. Bryant passed too hard. He's mad at Gasol for not getting it. And a turnover. Paul Pierce has been sensational in these playoffs. He's had some huge games. And doing it once again here in game five. My goodness, you're talking about Paul Pierce finding a way to get it done. Offensively, he has made every play this half, giving his team hope, looking forward to another big time comeback. As Kobe Bryant and the Lakers have once again seen a huge lead start to disappear. Paul Pierce is a big reason why, but here, this turnover, Mark. Well, Kobe Bryant comes off the pick and roll. It's called a pick and roll. Pau Gasol, soft, rolling to the basket, looking to pop as opposed to roll. And Kobe Bryant says, hey, this is for all the marbles. You have to be aggressive and with mean intent, roll to the basket and look to finish. Pau Gasol has to make the proper adjustment. Gasol and sometimes Lamar Odom been taking a lot of heat during this NBA Finals. Gasol and Allen. Can't connect, so a turnover. Number five for Boston. Lakers struggling to score here in the second. After 39 points in the first, they have four here in the second. And we're past the midway point. Kobe Bryant in and out. Odom tips it to himself and gets the rebound. Goes back up strong, won't go. Gasol knocked to the ground. And it's going to be Laker ball. Crowd wants a foul. James Posey has had a terrific series, and that has nothing to do with his points. He's just a tough player. Oh, he's tough, not afraid of the moment ready to make and take shots and then defensively he gets it an outstanding individual and team defender 
One of two Celtics already with an NBA championship. Did it with the Miami Heat back in 2006. Fisher's three. Gasol knocked out of bounds. No, nice save, P.J. Brown. You even think about Doc going to stand with the lineup. Ray Allen is a guy that's made big plays for and he finds himself still on the bench in the second quarter. Well, you look at the backcourt, Sam Cassell and Tony Allen out there. And they continue to cut into the lead. Cassell. Gasol the rebound and lost it out of bounds. He felt he got bumped. But the difference that time defensively, Gasol defending P.J. Brown, he helps and he stays on Paul Pierce, forcing him to give up the basketball. If you're guarding P.J. Brown, a non-scorer, your responsibility is to be the key help guy. Posey. Sam Cassell at 38, along with Brown also 38. Can't hit that one. Gasol the rebound. P.J. Brown battling him, pushing and shoving every step of the way. Bryant to Gasol, lobs it into Odom. Odom right-handed. That ends the 15-0 run. And it's their first points in almost seven minutes. And you see the Lakers going to pretty much the same play that the Celtics have gone with. High pick and roll, and Bryant makes the play high low Gasol to Odom. Doc Rivers calls timeout. And with this play, you put so much pressure on the defense because you have a home run hitter with the ball in his hands. You look to trap. He has to be a willing passer. Does it to Gasol. Law pass underneath the Odom. Everybody touches it. High percentage, quality possession. They were finding their way early. 39 points in the first quarter. Just a tremendous start. But here in the second quarter, they have really struggled. Went almost seven minutes without a point. And they've only had six points in eight minutes of the second period. So Phil Jackson's second straight game has saw his team jump out to a huge lead. And it starts to slip away a little bit. We asked Jackson if it was the toughest loss he's ever had because it was one of the worst in franchise history. Biggest collapse in finals history. And he said, as Pierce drives inside, the ones that you have a victory snatched at the last second, those are the ones that hurt the most. Do you feel the same way, Jeff? Well, first of all, he hasn't had very many losses, so he probably has a very short list of tough losses. Well, he mentioned Unlike game me. He mentioned game one in the 91 finals, the first year he was in the finals. In fact, his first game, he was the coach of the Bulls. They played the Lakers and lost on a last second shot. Let me just say this. If you have to go back 17 years, <laughs> you're doing pretty good, okay? So, but it, I think the ones that you regret are the ones that you feel you should have had. And in that game, they obviously should have had that game if they could have just withstood their intensity and passion. And they lost it midway through the third. Odom catches it and knocks it in. And then a whistle. And I believe it's a technical foul on Radmanovich. So Radmanovich picks up the tee. Ray Allen will shoot the technical free throw. And it happened after the ball went through the basket on Odom's shot. But I think that has to be done if you're Lamar Odom, if you're Powell Gasol. You have to punish the Celtics on the offensive board because you're bigger and stronger. Let's take a look at what happened after Odom got the offensive rebound. Here's Radmanovich. There it is. Well, that was easy. <laughs> but he got pushed, and so I, I don't mind that emotion. And I think that one you let go because it's just the heat of the moment and let him go. Right. Uh, Tony Allen again. Uh, that's, that's just bad defense. If you're Rachmanovich, there's a thing called fake hustle. Sasha Vujicic did it against Ray Allen at the end of the last game. Make him a jump shooter. You're picking him up as Lamar Odom gets the basket and the foul. Make him a jump shooter. Don't allow him to break down your defense. So Odom with a chance for a three-point play. It's just fake hustle defense. That's bad defense. This is a blow by. Contain him, stay in front of him, and make him a jump shooter. And then on the other end, good old-fashioned high-low gets the ball to Pau Gasol. Chris bounce pass Lamar Odom. Gets the basket and the contact. Those two guys working exceptionally well together. That's Gasol's fourth assist as Odom with a chance for the three-point play. But how about Tony Allen coming off the bench? He hadn't hardly played in the finals, hadn't scored, and he has six points here in the first half. So we talked about it. He's a guy that won the game during the regular season here for the Celtics. 
with no run, though Tony Allen played the point guard position and was phenomenal. That was back in December, one of his rare starts during the regular season. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see if Doc Rivers goes back to Rondo to start the second half or if he stays with what is working, playing anybody but Rondo. And I think if you're Doc Rivers, you have to start Rondo to start the second half and you look to pull him early if things aren't going well. But he's earned the right to start for the Celtics. The Saul spinning, kicks it out to Fisher. Fisher looking for an opening. Farmer, long three, way short. And it's Celtic call. Once again, U.S. Open Golf will have an 18-hole playoff. They finished tied at Torrey Pines today. The first nine holes will be on ESPN. Coverage starts at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Tiger Woods and Rocco Mediate finishing all even after 72 holes. Kevin Garnett stays on the bench with three fouls. The question's being answered. He's going back to Rondo at the next dead ball. Ray Allen knocks down another three. Allen played all 48 minutes in game four. First player to do that in regulation in the finals game is Jason Kidd did it for the Nets back in 2003. Farmar comes right back. Six three-pointer of the first half for the Lakers. Well, you Kobe Bryant continue to make the right plays. Farmer shoots an air ball prior to that. Trust your teammate, makes the play, and Farmer rewards his face. Dick Pavetta tells, tells Doc Rivers, stop it. Jack Nicholson has something to say to Pavetta. And we'll take it out of bounds. Nope, in the penalty. Well, here's Ray Allen moving off screens. Great screen by both Pierce and James Posey. And very few guys on catch-and-shoot plays off the baseline can balance up at the three-point line. So a technical foul on Derek Fisher. So there's a technical foul against Fisher and Ray Allen. Now it's double technicals, which offset you don't shoot them. Allen going to shoot on the personal foul, and they're in the penalty. I think that last play where Ray Allen knocked down the jump shot, if you're, if you're Lamar Odom, that last screen being set, you have to buy Derek Fisher extra second by help. Fisher after the call going over, having something to say. He's pretty calm. For some reason, I don't look at either one of those guys like I look at Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the classier guys in the NBA. Meanwhile, it's back to six. Under two to play here in the second. Inside pass. Autumn! Oh, beautiful move on a gorgeous feed from Fisher. But again, going to Odom after they moved the defense on the pick and roll against the smaller James Post. Odom with nine points in the second period. Posey on the drive. Nearly slips. Ball knocked loose, stolen by Farmar. Here comes Bryant. To Farmar, the no-look pass. Back out. Bryant fakes the three. He already has four. Farmar for three. And here's the rebound. Ray Allen on the drive. Boy, a lot of contact. And it's going to be Celtic ball. Doc Rivers upset. Ray Allen upset. The Celtic bench upset. All yelling at Dick Pavetta. See, when Allen drove, to me, one of the differences between the two teams is the Lakers go for shot blocks. The Celtics step in and take the charge. Here, Farmer flying by, deflects it. But if that's a Celtic player, he's holding his ground and taking a charge. Under a minute to play here in the second. Pierce wanted the ball. Rondo couldn't get it to him. Posey. Brian on Pierce. Paul Pierce, hard drive. Pass deflected. Good help defense. But P.J. Brown right there to clean it up. Coming up at half, the T-Mobile halftime report. A lot of analysis on the first half. Plus a special Father's Day feature as the Celtics will get it back. The Walton's Father's Day conversation. Luke and Bill. 
And once again, we send our special Happy Father's Day wishes to all those, including Big Bill. Great to have him back. You know, Luke Walton, before this series, received a, uh, a call from Larry Bird wishing him luck. How about that? A Celtic calling a Laker to wish him luck before the finals. Luke said he was honored to get a call from Larry Legend. Hey, Bird ain't a Celtic or a Laker. He's a pacer. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he's a Celtic. So. That's not who's paying him. <laughs> it's not always about the bucks. Yes, it is. Ask the owners of <laughs> Indy who, who, who it's about. Shot clock down to seven. Pierce, that's a three. It's good. Paul Pierce knocks it down. He's got 21 here in the first half, and it's a three-point game. Kobe Bryant, final seconds, puts up the shot, and that ends the first half as the Celtics come roaring back after a poor first quarter. They outscore the Lakers 30-16, once again led by Paul Pierce. 